Transforming a kernel of corn into fuel-grade ethanol is nothing new for biofuel producers like Green Plains Renewable Energy. But the fourth largest ethanol company in North America also is brewing something different, something their CEO calls the next generation of renewable fuel, the very green process of growing algae. So now that we're seeing corn ethanol succeed and start to, start to really turn the corner, we can really focus ourselves on next generations, second and third generations. This is not a, uh, an algae ethanol plant. This is an ethanol plant that has the potential to make a lot of high quality algae that we can use for many sources. The promise of algae brought hundreds of citizens and public officials to the unveiling of what looks like a futuristic and experimental process. We'd like to show you our bioprocess algae photobioreactors. Sure. Green Plains CEO Todd Becker was just one of many officials celebrating the biofuel company's latest venture into the slimy substance of algae. According to company technicians, the green matter is best brewed with warm water, exposure to natural light, and fueled by carbon dioxide. With the facility's bioreactor located indoors, outdoor natural light is piped in via fiber optic cable and supplemented on dark winter days by a series of LED lights. Ethanol plants expel thousands of tons of carbon dioxide and waste heat during normal production. Green Plains is now diverting some CO2 and waste heat into the bioreactor to feed algae growth. CO2 capture could benefit the company's bottom line as lawmakers weigh potential cap and trade legislation in Washington. But offsetting CO2 emissions is just one potential opportunity algae could provide biofuel producers. Now we're going to capture the CO2 from the process and grow algae. And then we're going to use that algae then to add to, as an added value into something else, like an advanced biofuel. We'll take the oil out of the algae and we'll, and we'll make biodiesel. That's going to happen potentially down the road. We'll take the fiber out of the algae and we'll make an advanced or a, a high quality animal feed. And then we'll take uh, potentially just the, the biomass and we'll burn it here and create our own energy. Becker's use of the word potential is not a mistake. Much of algae's energy and environmental promise has yet to be fulfilled. Nebraska-based Green Plains and Clarecore Incorporated, a Tennessee-based water filtration company, joined forces to create bioprocess algae. The joint venture seeks to commercialize the growth and harvest of algal biomass. While the process is still in its infancy, the Shenandoah, Iowa photobioreactor is the first step towards mass production. What we're doing here is a scaling project with our technology we like to call a grower harvester technology. And we think it's going to have the next kind of transformation steps. Energy initiatives in rural America have hit a bumpy road in recent years, skyrocketing food prices, record-setting input costs, and high-priced corn tossed some ethanol plants into bankruptcy. Green Plains appears to have largely survived ethanol's perfect storm and even acquired a pair of Verisun energy plants following the biofuel company's collapse. But the newest venture into algae production wasn't based entirely on a strong balance sheet. The state of Iowa's power fund funneled $2.1 million in grant money to spur project development. The taxpayer-funded award demonstrates that even the nation's leader in corn production is ready to diversify its energy portfolio. Is Iowa the right place to build an algae ethanol production facility? Absolutely. We, we really want to become the silicon prairie of the Midwest and do the research into the development of second and third generation renewable technologies uh, in Iowa. And, and this is just a great example of, of the fact that we can and we will do it here in Iowa. While the bioprocess algae photobioreactor represents phase one of the pilot project, Green Plains CEO sees room to expand. The next project's gonna move outside. These reactors are about 18 inches by 10 feet. The next reactors that we're building right now as we speak are three feet by 20 feet, and we'll put a lot, of more, lot more of those outside, capture more of our CO2, grow more algae, and continue with the process. Scaling up to commercial, commercial ability, you know, it, it takes a long time, but, but in, in, in reality, you know, we could be a year away, we could be five years away. We're going to find a lot more out now that we have these operating today. The promise of industrial expansion could be a boon to small towns like Shenandoah, Iowa. 
current president of the Shenandoah Chamber of Commerce, Greg Connell, originally pushed for algae production at the nearby plant. The town's former mayor sees his community and rural America at the foundation of an energy renaissance. This project to biofuels is the equivalent of what Kitty Hawk was to flight. Uh, and I think that, that the, uh, you know, four, five, six, ten generations from now, people will look back and say, my gosh, you know, what a, what a uh, primitive uh, way to develop biofuels. But it all has to start somewhere, and we think it's going to start in Shenandoah, Iowa. For Market to Market, I'm Andrew Bott.